in the 1800s, imagine there is no electricity. Imagine the British Raj era in which we were working with. And now think of Nagpur in the hinterland of Maharashtra and the Empress Mills, which was the flagship company of the Tata Group. Jamsetji Tata, the bearded doyen of the Tata Group and the richest businessman of his times, but the man who saw tomorrow for several reasons and often called the father of Indian industry, was attempting something very different. So what did he do? He had installed humidifying systems and dust removing apparatus so that the employees working there have a good working environment. He had made available fire extinguishers and automatic sprinklers throughout the sheds because the textile units are prone to fire. One. Secondly, he had, for the well-being of the employees, installed berg-filled water filters so that the hygiene and well-being of the employees is taken care of. He had provided a crash, a sanitary hut for women, a library uh, and a reading room, a recreation ground and a special grain depot where grains could be purchased on credit, especially at times of scarcity. And thirdly, he was providing pension, gratuity, provident fund and accident compensation for his employees, those who die during uh, work life, so that their uh, family would get that for the rest of his presumed work life. When? In 1800s. At a time when the working environment in Manchester was compared to the vision of medieval hell as described in Bible. That was the kind of employee welfare that we are talking about. You fast forward today and we have uh, someone uh, from the eminent TCS organization. It has moved to a different dimension where TCS has increased from 400 uh, software experts to 400,000 knowledge workers. But the kind of infrastructure and employee welfare commitment remains still at that level of, uh, of, of employee centricity. And as a result of which we see that the employee attrition rate in TCS is the lowest in the industry. And the top level succession planning is being the best compared to all other IT companies of its genre. So employee welfare in its own uniqueness and nuance can be studied from the Tata group in a very different way. Employee welfare in good times we discussed. Employee welfare in distress. 1922, Tata Steel. Almost on the verge of closure, World War I is just over and the British Raj has opened up the market for dumping. Tata has manufactured 3 lakh tons of steel to manufacture 2,500 kilometers of rail for the Allied forces in World War I. And after the war is over, competition comes in. The British Raj says, we don't care for the good that you've done for the war. Please face the competition. About to close down, they were not willing to do it. What happens? Dorabji Tata, then chairman, son of the founder, he mortgages the jewelry of his wife and the Jubilee diamond, which was twice the size of Kohinoor, with the State Bank of India, raises a loan of 1 crore rupees so that he can pay the wages of the labor force at Tata Steel and revives the company back into working conditions. Today we have headlines of people in such scenarios heading to some island where India does not have a reciprocative <coughs> immigration system or ways of getting people back. Reciprocative extradition system. So here is a way where when the company is in tough times, the founders bequeath their personal estate so that the well-being of the employee and the labor force is taken care of. So employee welfare can be the core of what the company should be doing at every level and at all times.